is going on, Hobby Family? It is your boy, K-Dub, and this is K-Dub's High Five. Five rapid-fire questions with your favorite hobby faces. And today, ladies and gentlemen, is a Twitter hobby favorite. He is the leader of the Ripping for the Cure Drive, raising thousands of dollars in the hobby for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. He's also the front runner, the spearhead to the Rack of the Day movement on Twitter, Mr. Rack of the Day himself, Eric Hecker, at ES Hecker on Twitter. How are you doing today, my dude? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Hope you're well today, too. Oh, absolutely, man. I appreciate you joining me. So how this works, I got five questions I'm going to throw at you, one right after another, all hobby-related. You ready to take on the high five? Let's do it. All right, man. One of the things I love about you is the rack of the day. Can you walk me through how you came up with the idea to start this rack of the day in 2021 and to continue it in 2022? Yeah, man, absolutely. So it was, it was crazy. 2020, I hopped back in the hobby. Met a lot of fine people, connected with you, connected with a lot of good folks. And I saw a lot of generosity going on, um, people just giving stuff away. I didn't quite understand it at the time, um, but I knew I wanted to be a part of it, right? And then I received one myself. My first rack was a Jose Ramirez autographed bat, and it blew my mind. Like, why is somebody sending this to me? And I saw how it made them feel, and I knew how it made me feel, and I wanted to do something more within the hobby. And I said, you know what? Let's give stuff away every day in 2021. Thank and that's you. really how it, how it started. Um, but I knew I wanted to put a little twist on it. I didn't want to just pick somebody randomly and give it to them. I wanted people to kind of be that, that backbone of it and have them make the recommendation to me of, you know, somebody that's doing good and, and being able to recognize them. And it's grown from there into what it is today. Absolutely, man. It's it's one of my favorite things, man. I look forward to uh, retweeting it every single day that it that it posts. So, um, and I and yeah. I appreciate that. It's definitely something I look forward to, and you know, I'm constantly thinking of what can I do differently, and how Absolutely. can we continue to grow this thing. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, you said you kind of jumped back into the hobby in 2020. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you think about your own hobby journey, whether that be when you're a kid or up until today. Who would you say have been some of your biggest influences in your own personal hobby journey? I mean, I, I have to give my parents the credit. They're the ones that got me into it at first. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they taught me the love of card collecting and the importance of it as well. You know, they, they, they showed me that it had value, not just monetarily, but also sentimental value. Mm. And, you know, that's what I've kind of carried forward to, the, to this day. You know, when I was a kid, my parents, they would, um, put together the top set every year, top baseball set every year from wow. the year that I was born in 1982. It'd be my Christmas gift from them of the year. Wow. And I said, when I, when I have a kid, that's what I'm going to do. And so I did. I, my, my son was born in 2017 and I started doing that for him. And so that kind of brings me to my first connection of, in the hobby. And it's, it's you. It's, uh, I have my notes here. I got to look at them. It's you. It's Garrett and Parker. And then yeah. Anna and Zach as well. From like a family perspective, how you all have really made it not just about you, but you got your kids involved. And I see that excitement. Um, the collecting side of things, like when I got back in 2020, I'm like, I'm collecting everything. I'm going to do Jose Ramirez. I'm going to do Kenny Lofton. I'm going to do Corey Kluber, like all of these Indians, the Browns. And then I met Che. And he's like, I collect every Rod Carew card I have because I like Rod Carew and I have every year of his. I'm like, man, that's such a sweet idea. Let me scale down my collection. Yeah. And, you know, I did. Um, somebody I have not truly interacted with in a whole lot is Jimmy at Kentucky Roadshow. Yes. That man's enthusiasm is inspiring. And, you know, I, I see him in his videos and through Twitter and I'm like, I, I want to be like him. Like, this is this is what yeah. it is for me. Um, and then finally, it's the breakers that I, I participate with. It's Rip and Gypsy, um, BCB, Midwest Box Breaks, and Eloy. Yep. Not only how they have fun and they connect with people, but their hard work and dedication to this hobby is mm -hmm. just something that I admire about them and, you know, something that I hope I can aspire to one day in doing this. Absolutely, man. Some absolute legends of yes. the hobby just dropped right there. Just absolutely. Um, all right, man, let's talk about your collecting. Uh, so you, you mentioned a few players there, um, mm -hmm. but do you have a grail card that you've always wanted or a favorite card, uh, that you have that will never leave your side? Uh, is there a, a card for Hecker that is the grail card? So the grail card was achieved this week. Heck yes. Right. This, this 1938 Gabby of Bob Feller. 
Yeah. Um, unbelievable rack by, by so many people. But I am pulling up one card. And you and I have actually spoken about this card. <laughs> um, it's a Panini sketch card. Oh, yes. From 2014. It's limited 101. I don't think you can see that. But it's signed by Devin Smith. Yeah. And why it's important is this piece here. It's my hometown, Maslin, Ohio. And, man, if I could ever land that card, I certainly would. It would not leave my side. There's actually two of them. There's that one. Then he did another one when he was drafted by the Jets. Yeah. That one's actually on eBay. I have no interest in that card because it's the Jets. Yep. But I'm watching it to see kind of where it lands if anyone purchases it. Um, the other Grail card, again, kind of hometown ties, is a 1952 Bowman Large of Paul Brown. Um, okay. He is also from Maslin. Okay. Um, and then went on to Ohio State and the Browns and the Bengals and all that. And then one, it might surprise some people, especially you, I don't have a Kenny Lofton autographed baseball. Oh. And that's something that I continue to can continue to watch for as well. Okay. All right. Well, I know that you have a lot of uh, autographed baseballs, but yeah. I figured I just figured it was already there. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of people probably do. He, yeah. he, doesn't, he never signed much. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he signed for the fans all the time. Mm -hmm but not in any product or anything, but he is starting to now. We see a bunch of athletes starting to sign, you know. For yeah. Now. Well, it'll come. It'll come. Yeah. yeah. Kenny Lofton retweeted me one time, so I feel like I got some ties with him. Maybe I'll hit I him. I know. Up. He's <laughs> like my tweets. He's retweeted my stuff too, and I'm like, I, I can die a happy man now. <laughs> my brother framed the, the retweet that Kenny Lofton did on me and gave it to me <laughs> for Christmas one year. So it was, it was a big deal. That's awesome. Um, all right, let's talk about product, man. I don't know how much product you rip, um, but is there a dream rip for you? You know, money, not an option. You can yeah. rip any product you want. Um, is there a dream rip for Eric Hecker? You know, this was something I, I struggled with this question because I don't really pay attention to product, like, especially now. I mean, I, I know who I like to collect and what I want to collect, so I don't go searching for stuff. And like I said, I, I, I'm putting together the top baseball sets for my son. You know, that's something I enjoy, but I really thought about it and I'm pretty nostalgic and old school. So one of them was the 1952 tops uh, okay. baseball. And it's not because of the Mickey Mantle. It's actually because they overproduced it, couldn't get rid of it and dumped it in the Hudson river seven years later. Yeah. So like, I want to say that I actually got to open a box that has never been opened before. Yeah. Um, just to, just to be a part of the history. And then the other one, you know, goes back to what I said earlier um, about my parents doing the whole sets for me. I'd love to get my hands on a box of 1982 tops. Um, yeah. I've always been infatuated with the Ripken rookie in that, in that set. So, you know, if I could pull a few of those from that, I'd be a happy person. It's awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, all right. Last question I got for you, man. Obviously we've talked a little bit about rack of the day um, hobby moving into 2022. A lot of big things happen. A lot of big things planned. Uh, what gets you most excited about the hobby and the hobby community moving into 2022? You know, I think we've seen a lot of negative in the hobby. I mean, it was like the highlight of the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. You know, we, we remember the videos of the guys rushing Walmart and Targets and all that. And they took away everything and then cards started skyrocketing and people were just getting upset about it. I think for the last like six to nine months, in we've seen that shift from the negative side of things to the positive side of things. And I see that only going further. And I'm not talking, you know, fundraisers and things like that. I mean, I truly just mean the positive side of the thing, the growth of people, yeah. um, the realization of what this hobby truly is. It's it's about, you know, you, you collect Bishop Sankey. I don't know anybody else that collects Bishop Sankey. You know, I don't know how many other people could tell you who Bishop Sankey is, but <laughs> you enjoy it. That's your yeah. hobby. That's your collection. I think more people are starting to realize that. You know, like, hey, this is supposed to be fun. Absolutely. This is meant for me, and it's meant for me to share with other people. And I just I see that happening and growing more in 2022. And, you know, it really does just it, it motivates me and excites me to continue moving on this year. Absolutely, man. I love it. I love it. All right, I got one more bonus question okay. for you because I don't know the answer to this. There are only a few dudes who I've interacted with who collect Kenny Lofton. Uh, one of those dudes was actually Gary V. Uh, if you know Gary V, he uh -huh. collected Kenny Lofton a lot when he was a kid. Um, there's you, there's uh, Steven Schmidt, uh, Ginger Snap 404. 
and Blake uh, B Fob 16 yeah. also. I, I don't know if he collects, but they're Kenny Lofton fan. How did you become a Kenny Lofton collector? You know, it's it's funny. So, I mean, he was traded to the Indians in 92 from the Astros. And it was kind of that formative year, right? Like 10, 11 years old where you're starting to come into your element of who, what teams you like, right? Yeah. Being from Northeast Ohio, big Indians fan. I played baseball. Um, I was a pitcher in baseball, but when I wasn't pitching, I played center field. And, you know, Lofton was starting in 93 in center field. And I just gravitated to him and yep. I started to just follow his career. And, you know, that was that. But mm. it's interesting, you know, he was traded for Eddie Tavanese got sent to the Astros. I just watched some highlights of Lofton the other day and didn't realize Tavanese actually got traded back to the Indians at the end of Lofton's career. Oh, and wow. He's congratulating him at, at home plate on the, um, I think it was when the Indians came back from tw uh, down 12 against the Mariners. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. so I mean, pretty special guy. I mean, just a good dude, too. I mean, he, he likes to interact with fans. So, yeah. you know, fun person to watch. I love it, man. I love it. All right. That's all I got, man. We got a high five at the end of the high five. Boom. You can uh, follow uh, Eric Hecker on Twitter at ES Hecker. Check out Ripping for the Cure as that starts moving forward as well. Rack of the day, that hashtag. Uh, you can also follow me if you're bored at Mr. Kata. Uh, continue to be the good in the world, my friend. Uh, continue to do what you do in the hobby. It's a true joy. Uh, to be your friend and uh, I guess uh, compadre in this hobby, you know, journey, man. So keep it up. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time on the next high five. This is a demo sound of freeintromusic.com.